Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and welcome to video two in our animation series. So if you haven't caught the first video, I'd suggest that you go back and check it out because we covered a lot of the basic information on the process here. So we might skip a few things in the second video, so it's very important that you go through the first one, you understand the process. We went ahead and we created basically a simulated lathe where we removed material from a rod that was moving past a, a rotating tool. So the second example that we want to take a look at is the example of basically an end mill moving through a solid plate. So the process or the, the steps that you follow is very similar, but there are a few differences when you're doing this type of motion. Now when we dealt with the rotating part, we had a single part that was moving along, in this case a linear path. So it was very simple to understand the kinematic relation there and, and what material was getting removed. When you're dealing with an end mill a rotating bit that's going to be going through a plate, it gets a little bit more complicated. Now there are a few things that, a few notes that I'll, I'll cover here, things that you cannot do. Now you'll notice that the path I've created is, in this case it's a spline. Now the reason I did that is because it's a single entity. When you're dealing with, let's say a straight line and then a right angle, those are two separate lines and it makes things a lot more complicated when you're dealing with something like this. Now obviously you can do this in multiple steps, but I wanted to do it in a single step. So we're going to show you the process here and cover some of the things that differ between the two. So the first thing is, I didn't use a layout sketch here, I simply drew the plate, an extruded rectangle, and I fixed it in space. I didn't worry about adding mates or, or doing anything like that, because in this example, the bit is moving and the plate is fixed. The next thing I drew was the end mill. So it was important to draw the end mill and have all the size references so we know what's actually getting removed, what material is getting removed. Then the third thing I did was I drew what I called the cut path. Now the cut path is the important part here. This is the hidden part that's going to be removing the material. So the first thing I did was an extruded boss. And if I roll this feature tree back, you'll get an idea of what I've done. So I've drawn an extruded boss that basically it, it starts the sweep path that I'm going to use to cut away. The second operation is a sweep. So the sweep is using the path that my bit is following and I've created an entire sweep that goes all the way down the part. So this is essentially what we want to end up with. We want to remove this material from the stock. So that first extrude gave us basically the cross section of what's getting cut away. It went up to the center of my bit with just a generic sketch. I didn't use any references to actually attach that with a reference to the center point of my sketch. I didn't do that because that really messes things up down the road. I wanted to create that extrude and then sweep along the path. So you might be wondering, well, if I didn't use any reference from the bit, how do I ensure that the path is, is getting cut away at the right time? Well, I created a sketch and this sketch uses the spline that's actually offset from my sweep here. It's using the edge of the spline. It's using the converted entity for my bit. It's using a smaller circle here that's concentric. And the reason we have the smaller circle is the outside of the bit where it's actually being held is a larger diameter. So this section here is actually matching what the tool would actually be cutting. So I have these circular references and I have the spline references and then I have this straight line here. The straight line has a perpendicular relation with the path and it has a tangent relation with the bit. So what that does for me, what that means is as I move this bit and I update this thing, that path or this line is going to move along, it's going to stay perpendicular to the path all the time and it's going to stay tangent to my bit. So it's really helpful as it moves along. You can see I'm getting some errors now because I'm moving this thing around with the tree rolled back partially. The next thing I did was a split operation. So I used that straight line that was in my sketch that stayed perpendicular to my path and tangent to the bit. I used that to split the path. So as the bit moves along, as it moves along this path, if we rebuild it, you can see that it's cutting my path away. Now inside the split, it's important that you use a consume cut bodies and you select the appropriate section that you want to remove. So after that, I did a full round fillet and the full round fillet allows me to maintain the same diameter as my bit. So if we draw this thing back and we rebuild it, let's go ahead and hop out of this part. 
So now you get an understanding of the dummy part that I had to create. Now obviously in the lathe example, it was real easy. We just did an extrude and it was a solid body and then that solid body was actually used for that surface offset and actually ultimately removing it from that part. So from this stage on, that is going to be the same procedure, it's the same process. Once we've created this section here, the path that we want to remove, and then we've created that split and consume cut bodies and the full round fillet, once we've done that, the hard part is done. That's going to be the most complicated part of this process. The next thing we need to do is go into our plate part and use that same process, that same procedure. So inside the plate, I have a surface offset. The surface offset is the offset of that path that we created, that cut path that we created that has the split feature in it. Then we do the same thing. We're going to thicken that into a solid body, and then we're going to use the combine. So once we do that, you can see that we have our solid body here, and the combine is actually removing it because it's part of the process where if you use that subtract, the body that is actually removing the material gets consumed by the operation. So now that you've seen all the background information, let's go ahead and hide that part and let's manually drag this along the path. So as we get into the solid block, if we re rebuild it, you can see that it actually removed that material. Now, if we drag it back and rebuild it, obviously it's going to take it away. But the important thing in here is as we move along the path, because we use that split feature that's consuming the cut bodies, it's not simply removing just this round section. It's actually leaving everything behind it also removed. So from this point, all we need to do is drag this thing back and create an animation. So we go into our motion study and when creating a path, blah, blah, blah. So basically the tool on the PathMate is free. They don't want you to use a percentage of the path or whatever it may be when you're doing animation. So let's go ahead and add some rotation to our bit. We want to make sure that we're actually rotating this thing the right direction. So in this case, we're going to reverse it. We want to flip that direction around. and Let's spin it pretty fast. Let's spin it a couple thousand RPM. So we're going 2000 RPM. So now the bit is going to be rotating. At that five second interval, what we want to do is we want to move our end mill. So we want to simply drag a key point to move this end mill at the five second mark. So at five seconds, this end mill, we want it to be all the way to the end of the part. So then we calculate this, and you can see that as it's moving through the part, it's rotating, it's cutting the material and it's leaving the path behind it. So if we play this from the beginning, you can see the bits rotating. Now obviously, it's hard to see the bit rotating at certain speeds. If you slow it down or you speed it up, it might be a little bit easier. So if we want to go back and edit the rotary motor, let's spin it at, let's say, 100 RPM. That might be a little bit easier for us to see. Recalculate it and run it through. So you can see that it's 100 revolutions per minute, but we're only traveling five seconds, so you're not getting a whole lot of motion here, but you can still see that the process is the same. So those are the two examples that we've taken a look at, and that's removing material with the end mill, which is obviously a good bit harder, and then removing the material with the machine rod. So this is a little bit easier example, and again, you can use this process to do many different things because you can create those features, just an extruded box, and then use it to cut away housing. If you want to look inside the housing or if you need to remove material, break something off of another part or so on. So there's a lot of different options here that you can use it for, a lot of flexibility if you understand the process and if you know how it's supposed to work. As always, if you guys have any questions, please email solidworksupport at mlc-cad.com and we'll see you next time.